Hi, my name is PK Gulati. I'm the founder of The Assembly. If you're here, you're probably watching an assembly workshop. We do these workshops every week and these are prepared by the assembly team in Dubai. These workshops cover ideas from data sciences, hardware design, automation, robotics, drones, and all the other exponential technologies that can, you can think about. The idea is for us to learn more than what curriculum teaches us. And we are trying to bring people to start working with their own hands with these technologies which have the capacity of changing the world. So welcome to this workshop and learn more about new wonders what you can build. Hi guys, welcome back to another workshop. My name is Aisha Afreen and in today's workshop uh, we're going to be doing face swapping program in Python using the OpenCV as well as the DLib library. So let me start by introducing you to the assembly. So the assembly is a smart lab that is based out of IN5 since December 2014. We've done over 300 free workshops. Uh, we have three different types of workshops. One is the hack workshop, which includes the embedded systems, IoT, as well as hardware. We have the code workshop, which is basically consisting of software projects uh, done, use, done using APIs, frameworks, and apps. Then we have the data science workshop, which is the workshop that we'll be doing today, uh, which consists of advanced topics such as um, AI and machine learning. So our target uh, audience are basically the individuals that, uh, here, that are here to learn and try new things. So uh, you could be entrepreneurs, professionals, or um, even students. So you can visit us on our forum, uh, that is uh, members.theassembly.ae. You can tag us on our social media, whether on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. So what is OpenCV? OpenCV is basically a library uh, that is fo focusing on programming functions, mainly aimed at real-time computer vision. Originally developed by the Intel, it was later supported by Willow Garage, then it sees. The library is a cross-platform and free for use under the open source Apache 2 license. It is, a, it is the huge open source library for computer vision, machine learning, and image processing. And now it plays a major role in real-time operation, which is very important in today's systems. By using it, one can process images and videos to identify objects or faces, or even the handwriting of a human. Now, uh, we'll also be using the DLib library today. So the DLib library uh, is an open source C++ library, implementing a variety of machine learning algorithms, including classification, regression, etc. So in this program, we'll be basically using this for facial landmark detection. So it has been pretend, uh, it has been pretend with different models, and the DLib is used to estimate the location of 68 coordinates x, y uh, that map the facial points on a person's face, which I'll be showing in the images uh, that are uh, to follow. These points are identified from the pretend model, where uh, the IBU G300 W dataset was used. So, in today's workshop, we will be doing face swapping in Python using OpenCV and DLib library. We can do this with eight simple steps. First, we need to take two images. So, in this, the source image we have a source image as well as a destination image. Now, then we'll be finding the landmark points of both images using the DLib library. So we use this library to detect the face mark, facial landmark points. And then we'll be using, we'll be doing the step of triangulation. So we'll be tri uh, using the delineate triangulation on the source image. So we're going to segment the face into triangles. This step is the core part of our uh, face swapping, as later we will simply exchange each triangle with the corresponding triangle of the destination image. Now, why do we divide the face into triangles? It's because we can't just cut out the face from the source image and put it onto the destination image, since they have different size and perspective. Also, we can't change its size and perspective right away because the face would lose the original proportions. So instead of that, we will split the face into small triangles and then we'll simply swap each triangle and in this way it'll keep the proportions and also it'll match the expressions of the new face. And like for example, if you smile or close your eyes or even open mouth. So this is how we're going to, this is the facial landmark points we're tracking and then this is the delineate triangulation. 
Now we'll do the same triangulation for the destination image. So the triangulation of the destination image needs to have the same patterns of the triangulation of the source image. That's, this means that the connection of the points have to be the same. So after we do the, the triangulation of the source image, from that triangulation, we take the index of the landmarks so that we can replicate the same triangulation on the destination image. So we'll take the index of these um, landmarks, these triangles, and then we will try to get the same indexes on this face. Then after this, we'll extract and warp the triangles. So once we have done the triangulation of both the faces, we take the triangles of the source face and then we extract them. We also need to take the coordinates of the triangle of the destination face so that we can warp the triangles of the source, image, the source face to have the same size and perspective of the matching triangle on the destination face. So this is how uh, we will take the triangle of the uh, source image and then we will try to uh, take the coordinates of each image. So if this is 41, 31 and uh, 2, we'll try to take the same coordinates in the destination image and uh, we will get this triangle which have the exact same coordinates as this but it looks different since it's taken from the destination image. Then we will link the warped triangles together. So once we have cut and warped all the triangles, we need to link them together. We simply rebuild the face using the triangulation pattern. With the only difference that this time we put the warped triangle. So this is how we will get. So these are the, this, the, the, this is the face of the source image. But the size of this uh, triangle, of each triangle, is exactly the same as the one in the destination in the destination image. After this, we will replace the face on the destination image. The face is now ready to be replaced and we cut out uh, the face of the destination image to make space for the new, new face. So we take the new face and the destination image without, uh, face and without the face and then we link them together. So we cut out the face of the destination image and then we try to put this image to this. Now after this, the last step is going to be seamless cloning. So finally, the faces are correctly swapped and it's time to adjust the colors so that the source image fits the destination image. So on OpenCV, we have a built-in function called the seamless clone that does this operation automatically. So we need to take the new face that is we've created on the sixth step and then we will take the original destination image and its mask to cut out the face we need and to get the center of the face and then we are ready to go. So this is how uh, it will look without the seamless cloning and this is how it will look with the seamless cloning. It's almost like it's the same face. So now let's start our coding. So first I'm going to show you how to code uh, two photos and swap the faces of that and then we will uh, see the same program in real time. So first, we need to import a few libraries. So the first library we're going to import is the OpenCV library. So import CV2, then import NumPy as MP for the arrays. Then we'll import the DLib library, which we are using for the facial landmark uh, detection. And then after that, we'll import the time library since we need the time. Okay, so now uh, after we have um, imported these libraries, we need to read the images. So I'll just show you the images. So uh, these are the images that we're going to be swapping, just like I showed in the PPT. So, and this, yeah. So we'll be swapping these two celebrities. Face. So now, we need to read these images. So in order to read this, we will write image cv2 dot imread and we'll give the name of the source image, which is Bradley Cooper JPEG. Yeah. Then uh, we'll just convert this image to a grayscale image, which is what we'll be using most of the time. So image gray. Yeah, cv2 dot cvt color and we'll give the input as the image and we'll use the function cv2 dot 
color BGR. So that BGR is basically blue, green, red, which are the standard colors, BGR2, gray. Okay, so the reason we are uh, converting to a grayscale is because it's just easier and uh, less complicated rather than reading an image with all the colors. Now, uh, we'll also try to read the second image. We'll give this as cv2.imread. Sorry, cv2. Dot, and then we'll give the destination image with this Jim Carrey dot JPEG. Yeah. And then we'll convert this also to the grayscale. So I'll just put this as image two. Yeah. So we've converted, okay, we need to put this as image two. So we've converted both these uh, images to grayscale now. Okay, so after converting to the uh, grayscale, we're going to, I'm going to just show you the output. So for that, uh, we're going to just uh, use the function inshow. So we'll do cv2.inshow. And uh, in this, we will just write the name of the frame image and we'll give the image one. And then again, uh, we'll just do the same thing here. Yeah. And we will give the image two and image two. And then uh, we need to press cv2 dot, we need to put cv2 dot wait key and give zero. Then we'll do cv2 dot destroy all windows. So, so now I will just show you the output. Yeah. So now when we run, yeah. So now you can see we have uh, two frames, one with source destination, source picture, and one with the destination picture. So now uh, we need to detect the uh, face and the facial uh, landmarks of that face so that uh, from them we can find the external boundaries of the face. So for that, uh, we will get, we'll put a variable detector and then we'll use the dlib library, that is detector. So we'll use this function. And now after this, we will put predictor is equal to dlib dot shape predictor and we will get uh, we will just put in the file shape predictor 68 so this file contains all the 68 uh, landmark points so 68 phase landmarks dot yeah so this is the file which has the land which is the landmarks uh, facial detector with the pre-trained pre -trained models. Now, if after this, after adding this file, uh, we'll use the dlib to estimate the location of the 68 coordinates x, y that map the facial point of a person's face. And uh, these points are identified from the pre-trained model. Uh, to detect the um, facial landmark points of the face of the first face, I will just put faces equal to detector we'll get the detector function and then we'll uh, add in the grayscale image and then we'll give a for loop for face uh, in faces and then we'll give the landmarks so the landmarks equal to and the predictor that we just defined predictor we'll give the source as the image grayscale image and give face yeah after this we will give the landmark points equal to we'll give that as a an empty array so this is just to put uh, the, all the landmark points in this and then we'll create another for loop so for n in range in 0 to 68 since there are 68 landmarks so there should be comma yeah 68 and uh, we'll see if the landmark detection is correct. So for that, we'll just put in the x variable, we'll put the x coordinate landmarks. So landmarks dot part of n dot x. So we'll give the x coordinate in this 
and we'll give the y coordinate in the y variable so landmarks dot part n and y just like we saw in the picture in the ppt uh, we'll give uh, small circles to detect each landmark so for that we will do pv2 dot circle image we'll give which is the source image and then we'll give the points we need the points x and y we will give the radius of the circle as three and after that we will give the color so we'll give the color as zero zero two fifty five so we'll give red color and then we'll put the thickness as minus one okay so uh, now i'll just to put the output of the image so i'll just copy paste this we don't need this okay so um after this uh we will be we need to find the convex hull the reason we are doing the convex hull is because we need to find the boundary surrounding the face and uh for that we need to find the convex hull of the facial uh, landmarks so the convex hull is basically uh, a shape that is the smallest convex set that contains it and we cannot have the angle that is bigger than uh, 180 degrees so for this what we need to do is we need to put points first we need to convert the landmark points into an np array so np are like from as the numpy array so num np dot array and we'll give the landmark points all the landmark points that we just found landmark uh, points and we uh, will make this in as an int array so int 32 yeah so the reason we're con uh, converting this into a numpy array is because uh, since python is a low level uh, language and uh, open cv requires a lot of uh, speed that's why we're converting it into a numpy array then we will get the convex hull of this. So the convex hull is, we will use the function convex hull, uh, in, which is an inbuilt function in the open CV. And we'll give the point, yeah, we'll give a landmark points and for that. Now after this, we will use CV to poly lines so that we'll get the lines around the face. Uh, which is the convex hull and then we'll give the source image and we'll give the convex hull and now uh, okay we need to give yeah if it is we want it closed so we want it closed that's why we're giving true and the color and the thickness also we can give okay so now uh, for the color we'll give it as the blue color so 255 zero zero and then um, now after this we will just give the radius that is three so uh, after giving this we'll just again we need this to get the output so i'll show you how the output comes so there's just an indentation error sorry so this is how we get the convex hull so this is the convex hull since I told you in a convex hull we cannot have an angle that is uh, greater than 180 so if if it's like this if this is how we get the um, convex hull then this angle and this angle will be uh, greater than 180 so that's why we are getting the convex hull in this way now after uh, we get the convex hull we need to get a mask which is basically a black image with the same size as the original image so i'll just do that here itself um, so we want the mask of the original image like the source image so that is why we'll put mask and then we'll give np we'll use the function zeros like and we'll give the grayscale image this image since it's easier to work and now um, I will just show, okay, so inside this, I'll just show the, yes. So this is basically the mask, just a black image of the original, that is the original size of the source image. And over here, the reason we're doing the mask is because we want the size of the convex hull. We want just the convex hull. So uh, for that, that is why we're creating the mask. So I'll just show you 
once I show you the output, you'll understand. Okay, so after we've uh, created the mask, we need to uh, fill the convex hull. So for that, we'll use the OpenCV uh, function that is the fill convex poly. So for that, we'll do fill con poly and mask. We'll give the source as mask and we'll give the part we need to fill is convex hull. And then uh, we will give 255. So 255 is basically for a uh, white color. So we need to make the inside of the convex hull as a white color. Okay, so I'll just show you the output of this. So over here, instead of image, we'll put mask. And when we try to run it, see, you can see that this is the mask. And inside the mask, only the part of the convex hull, we've made it as a white color. Now, uh, after uh, we've done this, after we found the convex hull and we applied it on the mask, we can put the mask on the original image uh, to extract the face and show everything on the screen. So for this, what we should do is we create, we'll do face image one and then we'll do cv2 dot bitwise and we'll give the source uh, image as image and destination also image and then we'll give the mask as mask okay so now i'll just uh, show you the output where you can see the face inside the convex uh, the mask so uh, we need to put face image one yeah now if i run this yeah as you can see instead of the white uh, color we got the face of the source image the convex hull basically of source image. Okay, so now uh, after this, uh, we'll be doing the delinear triangulation, which is basically the triangulation of the convex hull of the points of the diagram, uh, in which every circumcircle of a triangle is an empty circle. So we'll give rect equal to, we'll use the um, OpenCV function bounding rect, and we'll give convex hull as a parameter. So this is basically to get the uh, rectangle of the, uh, the rectangle covering the face. So now we will uh, extract the points from the convex hull. So for that, we will get x, y, w, and so x, y, and then we'll give the this as the rectangle. Now we will draw the rectangles for that cv2 rectangle and we'll give the image then we'll give x comma y and that is the row and then x plus w and y plus inch as the yeah this is then we will give the color as green so 0 to 55 0 and then the thickness we'll just no need to give it because it's fine. So once we get the rectangle, we need to do we need to start with the delineate triangulation. So we will give the variable as subdiv, and we'll use the built-in function uh, for triangulation, which is uh, subdiv 2D. So 2D, and inside we will put rect. And then we will use subdiv, subdiv insert, dot insert, and then we'll give the landmark points, landmark points, yeah. Okay, so now we need to get the triangle. So triangle equal to subdiv dot we get we'll use the function get triangles list to get the triangles so get triangle list so uh, we need to print the triangles output in uh, which is the x and y of the first point and the x and y of the second point as well as x and y of the third point so for that first we will make it into a numpy array so triangles we'll give np dot array so this is np dot array and we'll give the input as triangles and then we'll give the data type as int so np dot int 32 
Okay, so the, we are converting the point from uh, int into int from float. Okay, so now if I just put print uh, triangles, we can get the, yeah, we'll get the xy of the first point, xy of the second point, and the xy of the third point of the triangle. Okay, so yeah, as you can see, it's a huge list. Now, um, after this, we've come to the most important part that we uh, that we need. So for this, we need to find the indexes of each of the triangles. In other words, we want to know uh, not only the coordinates of the triangle, but what are the specific landmark points which connects each of the triangle. So for that, we'll just uh, create an array. So index triangles, and then we'll give an empty. And now we'll create a for loop for p in triangles okay now uh, after creating uh, the for loop for this we need to get the so for point one the landmark points so point one we will give as p of zero comma t of one so this will print the first point so like this we need to print all the three points so for that i'll just put the same i'll just copy paste this and over here we'll put two, three, four, and five. Okay, so uh, these we will uh, print the points. Now, if we will do cv two dot line, so we need to draw the uh, triangles after getting these points. So for that, image, comma pt one, pt two, and then we'll give the color of it as uh, red. So zero dot uh, zero comma zero comma two fifty five, and we'll do the same thing for each of the points so that we get a triangle. Okay, so we don't need this much uh, spacing. Yeah. So over here we need point two and point. Three and over here we'll do point one and point three. Yeah, so from this we will uh, get the uh, triangles. Okay, so now I'll just show you the output of the first point. So if I do print pt one, so then you'll get this. Now if I just uh, remove this and I'll show you how the image is going to come. Like I'll show you all the tri dilinear triangulation. So I'll just copy paste uh, this and you will so as you can see this is the output so we get we got all the um, triangles of the source image okay so now uh, after getting the uh, triangles in the first phase we need to find the triangles of the second phase so to get this we need to find the index of the triangles of the first phase to do this we will in the, we'll do index pt1 equal to we'll use the where function and we where points equal to equal to pt1 and then dot all axis axis equal to one so uh, this is where the so in this case the point one is in the uh, array so if you want, I'll just uh, print this. So if I print index pt1, we get an array of 62 and a data type of this. Now, um, after this, we need to do index pt1. We need to extract the indexes. So in order to extract this, I'll just uh, create a function. So I'll just create the function here. So I'll create a function so that we can extract each of the um, indexes. So for that, we will do def. Uh, we'll give the name of the def function as def extract index np array. And then, so this is a function that we need to extract. So inside this, we will give index as none. Okay, so wait, cap two. Yeah, index is none, and then we give a for loop for num in np array uh, zero, 
we'll give index is equal to we'll give the num and then we'll break then we'll try to return the index so uh, this is our uh, def extract index form uh, function so after this now we'll use the function of extract index and index pt1 is equal to extract uh, index np array and then uh, we will give index pt1 as the array and we'll uh, we have to do this uh, same thing for uh, each of the both both the other points so we'll keep this as two two and then this will be two and yeah so three now after we got all these uh, points we need to make an if loop so uh, if index pt1 is not sorry and index pt2 is not none and index pt3 is not none then we will get the triangle of the second phase so in the index so index pt1 then index uh, pt2 and index pt3 after this we will try to append this so into the indexes triangle dot append and we will do append okay so then we will put uh, index uh, so indexes triangle and uh, we will uh, append the points into this uh, array if it's not none so then we'll put index triangle dot append dot append and yeah. okay so now uh, i'll just show you the uh, output of the point one so i'll do print uh, yeah print uh, pt1 and then uh, if i run this okay you can see the x and y of each of the points and then i'll also try to show you print index pt1 uh, i'll just remove this yeah if i run this uh, so we'll get the first index of each of the, of the point okay so now that we know the uh, indexes of each of the points we'll just uh, scroll down okay so there are a lot of points now we need to, we need to make the same triangles starting from the landmark points of the second phase so now we'll need to find the landmark points of the uh, second phase so for that we'll just uh, do the same uh, as we did before okay so now uh, i've copy pasted this uh, the same thing that we did before uh, so we're going to find the landmark points for the second phase as well as um, we'll create a mask uh, for the uh, first uh, for the source images grade scale as well as for the second image so i'll just uh, run this now so you can see uh, these two are the masks that we've created and uh, we can see the landmark points of the second phase okay so now uh, we're going to just i'm going to show you the triangulation of the uh, second um, destination i mean second image uh, so for that we'll create a for loop for triangle index in indexes triangles and then uh, we'll give pt1 equal to landmark landmarks points and then we'll give a uh, triangle index zero now uh, we'll do the same thing for each of the points and then we'll change the numbering so this is point one, point two, and over here uh, we'll put it as one and two yeah then we will uh, use the align function to draw the tri uh, triangle so image two pt1 uh, pt2 and then we will 
with the color 00255 so i'm just giving that color and then two and the same thing again we need to do it again for each of the points each of the lines uh, so over here i'll put it as two and three okay so there's supposed to be a comma there and then over here i'll put it as three so now we've uh, done the line function uh, we will use the imshow method so we don't need these two so if i just run this as you can see we, uh, there is the uh, delineate triangulation of the second phase Okay, so now uh, I just since I showed you the triangulation of the second phase, I'm going to just we need to do both the triangulation, uh, the triangulation one and two in the same loop. So I just uh, copy pasted the same thing because it's what we did before. So uh, we created the triangulation of the first uh, first uh, triangle after getting the points, just like before. I just change the variables, and then we'll get the uh, rectangle. We'll get the triangle uh, one array, which has the points of uh, each of the triangles. And then after that, we will get uh, the bounding rectangle, which is the rectangle that will cover each uh, of the triangles. Since we need to uh, warp all these, each and every single one of them, uh, I'll be showing you the output later. Then you'll understand. And then after this. Um, we're going to do uh, we're going to get the crop triangle so this will be the row and this will be the uh, the x corresponds to the column and then we're going to create a mask from this uh, crop triangle since we only since we don't need the whole rectangle we just need the uh, triangles in between uh, so for that we're creating a mask that we can only fill the of each of the triangles and then we will create a point so uh, these points, this will, uh, so the X and the Y will correspond to the uh, uh, X and Y of the entire image. So we will remove uh, these uh, uh, TR1.1 uh, TR1 from the X uh, of each of the images so that we only get the rectangle. And then we'll try to fill uh, this uh, convex poly. That using convex poly, we'll try to fill the uh, triangle with uh, white color, and then we'll try to crop this out, uh, and then uh, we will uh, draw each of the lines uh, of the triangle. So the same thing we'll be doing for the second phase as well. Now after this, we need to uh, warp the triangles. So to warp the triangles, uh, what we need to do is first we need to create the sorry this uh, yeah points is equal to np float 32 and uh, points and then we will give the same thing we'll make the points the second point as well points to of np dot float uh, 32 and then we will points 332 and then we will uh, create a matrix using a uh, inbuilt function that is a get affine function so get get uh, affine transform and then we'll give points and then points the second point as well and then we will create the warped triangle so warp triangle variable and then we will do cv2 dot uh, warp a fine since we need the uh, size of the first triangle to be the exact size of the second triangle only then it'll fit in so we will give a uh, crop triangle uh, then the matrix and then we will give the width and the height of the second triangle and then we will since we need a single triangle we are going to go break and now I'll just uh, now we need to show the output I'll show you so uh, I just copy pasted this now if I run this part okay so okay so points the okay sorry that is my mistake so I'll just remove this it's points 32 it's points 2 yeah 
Now, as you can see over here, we have the output. So this is the uh, single triangle that we needed. And now for, okay, uh, so this will be the small triangle of the first image. And this will be the triangle of the second image, that is this one. And now this will be the warped triangle, that is we have taken this, this triangle and then warped it to, into the same size as this triangle. So in this way, we'll be doing uh, every other, all of the other uh, triangles. Now, after uh, warping this triangle, we need to reconstruct the face. So for reconstructing the second phase, what we need to do is create image to new phase, rect area equal to image to, so this is the, uh, the rectangle of the image. So we are going to, um, copy the next part of the triangle each time and then we'll add a new triangle to it. So that is why we are going to extract the area of this. So for that we'll do image uh, to new phase, new phase and then we'll give the area. So y equal to y plus h and then x is x plus w. And then we need to create uh, the grayscale area of this, so image area and then gray. So creating a grayscale uh, image, we need to do uh, cv2 dot cvt uh, color. And then uh, inside this, we will give the image. Okay, so we'll just give uh, yeah the image to area and then cv2 dot uh, cvt, sorry, color bgr to gray so in this way we created uh, the grayscale area since we need a black and white image to create a mask and now we will do so this mask so we're giving underscore since it takes two values and we only need one so mask triangles designed and then we will give a threshold. Yeah. So CV2 dot uh, threshold image to. Uh, okay. So this is basically this. Yeah. So image two dot new phase uh, rect area, and then we need it. It's we need the grayscale one, so rect area gray, and then one will be the pixel value, and then two fifty five, and then we will give cv two dot thresh binary inverse. Sorry, this will be in capital inverse. So a threshold is basically a technique in OpenCV, which is the assignment of pixel values in relation to the threshold value provided. So in thresholding, so if each pixel value is uh, each pixel value is compared with the threshold value, and if the pixel value is like smaller than the um, threshold, uh, then it is set to zero. Otherwise, it is set to the maximum value, which is generally two fifty five. So after this, we are going to put warp triangle equal to uh, cv two dot bitwise. And, and then we will give the warped uh, triangle, that will be the source and the destination and then the mask. So mask of triangle uh, design, yeah, so we've created, we just now created the mask and then we will give, uh, so image to not rec face and then we'll give cv2 dot add of image yeah so same thing and warped triangle so this uh in so the reason we're using this add function is because this will contain the previous triangles along with the new triangles so then when we connect it it'll be uh when we connect each phase i mean each uh, triangle it'll become a single phase now after this we are going to give the uh, image image to new phase image to new phase and then we will give 
the area that is y plus h comma x uh, x plus w yeah so x plus w equal to image yeah image to not rect area so now uh, so the phase of the first actor is now warped to look like the phase of the second actor and um, so if you want to just suppose if you get red lines then you just have to comment the cv2 dot line function that we didn't do before so I'm just going to show you the output for this. We're just going to uh, run this. Yeah, so this is how uh, we have reconstructed the phase. This is the output that we'll get as the image two. Now uh, we're going to be uh, doing the phase swapping part. So once the phase is reconstructed, we are going to combine uh, the triangle and then we'll create a mask to select the face so that we can re uh, remove the original face from the second from image 2 so for that we will do image 2 face mask equal to np dot zeros uh, like okay image 2 gray using the grayscale image and then uh, after that we will do image uh, 2 uh, head mask we will give cv2 dot fill uh, convex poly and then we will fill the image to face mask and then convex hull 2 which is the convex hull of the second face mask uh, and then uh, after that we will give this as 255 then image to face mask we will try to extract it so cv2 bitwise not so since we've given here 255 as the white color so we, we are taking not so that we can get the black uh, the convex hull in the black sh in black color so not image to head mask and then uh, after this, once we uh, have the mask, we need to extract everything from image two except for the face or the convex hull. So to do that, we are going to do image. Sorry. Yeah, we are going to do image to head no face equal to cv2 dot bitwise and image 2 again we'll give image 2 and then we'll give the mask so the mask is um, image 2 dot face mask now after this we're going to add both the images so for that we will give the result equal to cv2 dot add and then image to head no face and then we're going to add the image to new face so in this way we have um, added both so i'll just um, include the seamless cloning now so that we get a good so x y w and h we'll give the cv2 dot bounding rect and then we'll give the convex hull 2 and then after that we'll give the center face sorry center face 2 equal to then we'll give int this is to find the center point of the source image and then int um, x plus x plus w by 2 and then comma int we will give y plus y sorry y plus y plus h uh, divided by 2 so uh, this will give the position of the center and then we will use the seamless 
clone. So sorry, seamless clone. And then we'll give CV2 dot uh, seamless clone. And we will give the image that we want to clone. So result and then image to head mask comma center phase two. And then we will give CV2. So this is normal clone. So this is the uh, CV2, uh, the seamless cloning function. So this will be the input array. This will be the source. This will be the input array destination. Uh, and then this, um, we will give this as the a flag. So after this, we are going to show this. So we will do in show and then we'll give seamless clone. So I will give here seamless clone and then seamless clone okay so now uh, i will just show you the output by running this yeah so as you can see here we have uh, swapped our image and using seamless cloning it looks like the same image now okay so now uh, after this, I'm just going to show you how to do this in real time where you can use the webcam and do it on your own face. Okay, so I've just uh, copy pasted the code that we did before into a single, uh, into another file. And now to get the web frame or the uh, real time uh, program working. So the first thing we need to do is to do cap tv2 dot video capture which is an inbuilt function in C in the open cv and put zero so zero uh, will access the default camera from your uh, laptop and after this now what we need to do is we need to create a while function so the re the place where they're going to create this is over here so we will give while true and we'll just put this as underscore since it's supposed to take two values but we don't need that so and then we'll try to read whatever we are capturing from the uh, webcam and then image to and then we we'll create this into a grayscale so cv2 dot cvt color and then we will do image to dot uh, cv2 dot color bgr to gray now uh, we will create a mask so sorry image new face image to new face sorry is equal to np dot zeros like image two so now after this all we need to do is now uh, uh, give the show the output. So for that, we will do cv2 dot in show of image two. So first it will show the image two, and then we will uh, get to see how it shows the when it we are like seamlessly cloning it. So uh, this will be the seamless. Uh, clone and we will also show the result so in show result and then uh, if we should write if cv2 dot weight key weight key equal to one okay and uh, zero sorry into ff is equal to equal to odd Q. So if we press Q, then this the web frame will stop showing, and we will give. Then we will do cap dot release and cv2 dot destroy all windows. So this is how uh, we do it for if you want to do any real time function these are the this is how we do it okay so i'm going to run this 
and as you can see we have image 2 over here that is my face and then we have the result which is without the seamless cloning and now we have the one with the seamless cloning so this you can you can do this with um, any of any other images that you want to upload just go over here and um, instead of jim carrey just enter some other photo it's your wish and yes so this is it for today's workshop thank you for watching our video if you like the video please do share and subscribe to our channel for more upcoming videos stay connected through us on social media we're on facebook twitter and instagram